If you are looking for the best gaming monitor 2023, you've come to the right place. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. Here we go with our best gaming monitor 2023 edition, where we get you everything that you need to know to buy the best gaming monitor for PC or console gaming. And we provide specific product recommendations at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K to get you the best gaming monitors in 2023. Remember, if you get value out of the video, please give it a like because it really helps out the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. Now, gaming monitors are very complicated. So let's Focus in on the key things that you need to know. Number one is what resolution and aspect ratio are you looking for? Now, there are three primary resolutions to decide on. There's 1080p versus 1440p versus 4K gaming monitors. Remember, you can drop the resolution down on a monitor, but it can never go up above its resolution. Now, there are also three main aspect ratios. The most mainstream aspect ratio is called widescreen or 16 by 9, meaning 16 pixels wide for every 9 pixels in height. Ultra wide gaming monitors are 21 by 9 and super ultra wide gaming monitors like the Samsung Odyssey G9 are 32 by 9. Note that consoles like the Xbox Series X, PS5, and Xbox Series S do not provide much support for ultra wide or super ultra wide gaming monitors, so I would only recommend them for PC gamers. The second most important thing when buying a gaming monitor in 2023 is how many FPS you want to get, which is controlled by the refresh rate. Now, refresh rate is the number of times per second that the screen refreshes the image, and it's expressed in hertz or HZ, which you can think of as the maximum frames per second or FPS a gaming monitor can produce. So if the monitor is a 144 Hz gaming monitor, which is pretty typical gaming monitor refresh rate, it can display up to 144 FPS. Note that this is the maximum FPS of the monitor. Just know that the monitor will never be able to output more FPS than the monitor's refresh rate. Gaming monitor refresh rate between 144 and 170 Hz are very common, and some esports gaming monitors can display 360 Hz or now all the way up to 540 Hz. So what gaming monitor resolution is best for your gaming PC or console? So for PC gamers, it's all about how powerful your graphics card is and how GPU intensive the games you play are. Some games are easy to run and they get a lot of FPS, such as Valorant, Fortnite, League of Legends, or World of Warcraft, while others like Cyberpunk 2077 or Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 are much harder to run. So the same gaming PC that gives you 144 FPS at 1440p on Fortnite might struggle to run Cyberpunk 2077 at the same resolution. As a general rule, if you want to play AAA titles at 4K, then I recommend a performance level of an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 or AMD Radeon RX 6800 or higher. For 1440p, my general recommendation is a performance level of an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 or AMD Radeon RX 6600 XT or better. But a lot of easy to run games will work just fine at this resolution on lesser hardware. For 1080p high FPS esports gaming, I would also recommend these as the minimum GPUs, but for standard 1080p gaming, anything down to an RX 570 will do. For console gamers, any of the next gen consoles are capable of 1080p or 1440p, Though I do not recommend 1440p for the PS5 as it lacks variable refresh rate at that resolution. More on VRR later in the video. Both the Xbox Series X and PS5 are powerful enough to do 4K 120fps when paired with an HDMI 2.1 4K gaming monitor. But I do not recommend 4K for the less powerful Xbox Series S. I have a dedicated console gaming monitor video which I'll leave linked down in the video description if you're looking for a deeper dive. Response time is the time it takes a pixel on the screen to go from one color state to another, and it's expressed in milliseconds. Now, low response times are important because it means the gaming monitor is faster, and it helps avoid what's known as ghosting, when fast-moving images leave trails as they move across the screen. Unfortunately, most manufacturers list one millisecond response rates, which are largely nonsense except on OLED monitors. And the only way to get an accurate number is through a third-party review that tests it. My advice, it's just to ignore the response times listed by retailers or manufacturers. Let's talk about panel type because there are now four main panel types, TN, VA, IPS, and the newest is OLED. TN panels are older technology, but because they allow the absolute fastest refresh rates, you'll find them on ultra high refresh rate 1080p esports monitors, but their image quality is lacking versus any of the other panels. The most mainstream best gaming monitors in 2023 use either a VA or IPS panel. With recent advances in panel technology, the gaming differences between them 
it's largely shrunk. Generally, VA panels have much better contrast and black uniformity, while IPS panels typically have better viewing angles and color display. VA panels are often used in curved monitors, while IPS are almost all flat panels. In 2023, the absolute best gaming monitors and most expensive use OLED panels with near infinite contrast and virtually instantaneous response times and allow truly incredible HDR gaming. The previous downsides to OLED were the risk of panel burn-in when used as a PC desktop monitor, fuzzier text clarity, and constant dimming to prevent that burn-in. I'm happy to say that the models now on the market and launching in 2023 seem to have largely solved almost all of those issues. So if you have $1,000 or more to spend on a gaming monitor, OLED is hands down the choice, and we'll have a special section in the video just for those recommendations. AMD FreeSync versus NVIDIA G-Sync. Now this is a very complicated subject, so we're just gonna go over the basics of what you need to know. Now both FreeSync and G-Sync are versions of variable refresh rate, or VRR for short. It's also called adaptive sync. VRR helps sync your screen's refresh rate and the system's graphics output to prevent screen tearing. Now, every gaming monitor in 2023 should come with either AMD FreeSync or NVIDIA G-Sync, with AMD FreeSync being the most common. Note that some monitors are called G-Sync compatible, but all this really means that it's a FreeSync monitor that has taken the extra step to certify compatibility with NVIDIA GPUs. For PC gamers who just want to ensure that their VRR works, it doesn't really matter whether you have AMD FreeSync or NVIDIA G-Sync on your monitor as long as you connect to your GPU using the DisplayPort cable. Or if your monitor is HDMI 2.1 capable, you can use that as well. Note that some monitors come with premium versions of both G-Sync or FreeSync that offer other benefits exclusive to their brand. But in my opinion, none of the extras are important enough to move my monitor purchase, and I'll leave a link to an article down in the video description if you want a deeper dive. For console gamers on Xbox Series X or Xbox Series S, if you aren't buying a 4K HDMI 2.1 gaming monitor, you want a FreeSync capable gaming monitor as your console uses an AMD GPU and you're stuck using HDMI. If you're buying a 4K HDMI 2.1 monitor, the new HDMI 2.1 standard has its own version of VRR over HDMI, so you're set with that. Note the PS5 currently can only use VRR at 1080p or 4K gaming monitors, so I don't recommend 1440p gaming monitors for PS5 owners. Curved versus flat monitors, exactly what it sounds like. Some monitors are curved, particularly ultra-wide and super ultra-wide aspect ratios, while others are flat. Now, folks who like curved gaming monitors, they often say it's much more immersive, which I personally agree with, but curved monitors may not be the best for desktop usage or tasks like video editing, so consider your use case. Monitor curvature rating is a number followed by R, and the lower the number means the monitor is more curved. So what's the best gaming monitor 2023 for each type of gamer and budget? Well, if you have less than $200 to spend, it's a pretty easy choice as only 1080p gaming monitors are really available to you. The good news is that for about $180, you can get a pretty nice 1080p 24 or 27 inch gaming monitor that supports 144 hertz. For those PC gamers looking for ultra high frame rates for competitive shooters, 1080p is still the best place to be and you can find 280 hertz gaming monitors for between 200 and 300 dollars with the fastest professional level esports monitor hitting 360 hertz for those looking to step up into 1440p gaming at around 144 hertz 27 inch budget gaming monitors start about 275 dollars and 32 inch models start around $350. At about $400, we find the entry point to 240Hz 1440p gaming monitors and 4K 144Hz monitors begin at just under $500. $800 is the starting point for OLED gaming monitors, both at 4K and 1440p at 144Hz, with the newest OLED panels going up to 240Hz, but they're currently over $1,000. All of our recommendations are listed down in the video description and they're based on current US pricing and availability. Of course, as new models launch, we'll evaluate them and we'll list them down in the description below with a link if we think they're good deals. Well, let's jump into 1080p gaming monitors and we'll start off with the budget and then we'll go to the high FPS esports one. Remember, links are down in the video description. And we're going to jump right into my best value recommendation, which is the AOC 27G2SP. That's the 27 inch version. And the AOC 24G2SP. That's the 24 inch version. Currently sold out as I'm making this video, but I do expect them back in. $180 right 
right now for the 27 inch, that's an insane value. 165 Hertz refresh rate, really good color gamut on both these monitors, relatively low latency on them. Absolutely amazing IPS panels. Quick note, do avoid, at least for right now, the 27 G2S and 24 G2S without the P on the end, because that's actually a brand new different monitor that AOC just introduced. It's a VA panel, not IPS. So for right now, until it gets reviewed and we have some data on it, I would dodge it. If it is listed down in the video description, that means I've reviewed it and it looks good to me. What about some alternatives, especially if you are living in a market where that monitor is not available? I do like the Pixio PX248. This is a 24 inch, 144 Hertz gaming monitor. Now this is the Prime Advance. It actually has some onboard speakers on it as well. Apply this $20 coupon button at the bottom. That's why Amazon does a lot of this these days. So if you see a difference between what's listed in the video description and here, just make sure there's no coupon. I also leave an icon next to that in the video description, just FYI, that way you know to check the coupon before you buy it. If you're looking to spend just a little bit more money and get something slightly higher quality, especially if you're looking for more of an all-in-one solution with a decent set of in-monitor speakers, as decent as in-monitor speakers get, check out the BenQ Mobius EX2510S. This is a 25 inch 1080p, IPS gaming monitor, essentially very similar to that AOC panel, just slightly better audio in it, slightly better features. This would be great, especially if I'm looking for something for a console on a budget. What if you're an eSports pro and you want to get 240 hertz or higher refresh rate because you want that super competitive advantage in all those shooter titles? If you only have about $200 to spend, Acer Nitro XZ270, really good. This is a VA panel. It has a 1500R curvature for it, 240 hertz refresh rate, pretty good good color game on it, pretty good contrast as well. But the best part is the price. Typically ranges anywhere from about $199 up to $220. Right now it is on super sale for $199. So again, if you want to get the super high refresh rate, but you don't want to spend all the monies, this is a really good option. Of course, we also have in here my two best options from previous years. Again, this is just a really good value right now. The Asus Tough Gaming VG259 QM, 24 and a half inches, also a 27 inch. I'll leave a link for that down in the video description, usually a little bit more. Sometimes it's the same price, but 280 Hertz refresh rate, really good low latency monitor. Right now selling for $270. That's about what it goes for in 2023. The other option, honestly, in my estimation, almost as good is the ViewSonic Omni XG2431. This is a 24 inch 1080p, 240 Hertz. In my estimation, I would get either this or the Asus one, whichever one is cheaper. Right now, this is 279. If you're an absolute esports professional nut and you have to have 360 Hertz or higher refresh rate, you're absolutely insane. But I got the monitor for you, which is the Asus ROG Swift 360 Hertz, PG259 QNR. This is a 24 and a half inch super fast panel. Now it's IPS. That's why I like this panel better. Some of the super fast panels, most of them tend to be TN. Older technology, it is technically faster. However, the image quality, not up to snuff versus IPS in my estimation. I know Asus is going to come out with a 540 hertz version of this panel later in 2023. That's also going to be TN. So I still really do like this panel. I may even like it better than the 540 hertz one, especially at $329 right now, this has the actual NVIDIA G-Sync hardware module in it. It's not just G-Sync compatible. So if you have an NVIDIA GPU, this is going to give you like the reflux latency analyzer and all those goodies for first person shooters. So if you're absolutely serious about being the best, having the highest advantage at first person shooters, this is probably the monitor for you. Well, let's jump into the best budget 1440p gaming monitors. And this is super exciting. Remember links to everything are down in the video description. Prices have absolutely tumbled from this point last year. And there are so many models here that I could recommend as the best budget. So remember, check those links. But right now, the one I would definitely pick is the HP X27Q for $209. That is an insane price. This is actually the lowest I've seen the monitor. I was expecting to see it more like $229. I would buy this monitor all the way up to $270-ish dollars because 4K gaming monitors have come down so much. It's put a lot of price pressure on the 1440p gaming market. And as a result, we're seeing super awesome deals like this. This is a phenomenal panel. It's got great color gamut to it, 
relatively low latency and good motion handling, $209. I don't know how you can pass up a deal like this. If you're looking for something more in the curve variety, then we've got the Dell S2722DGM. I know rolls right off the tongue, right? $249. This monitor used to sell for more like $350. Pretty good price for it, especially if you can't find the HP X27Q in your market. Really nice panel. This is a VA panel, really good contrast to it. Many people might be asking, hey, Jason, where did the Gigabyte M27Q-P or M27Q Pro go the 165 hertz 1440p gaming monitor that you called the best 1440p gaming monitor last year. Well, it's completely out of stock at the time of filming. I do expect them to come back in. The vanilla version, the older version is selling at 299. I don't think that's a good price for it, but check those links down in the video description. If it comes in anywhere between 230 and $270, that's a really good price for it. I think it's very slightly better than the HP 20X27Q. So go ahead and buy which of those monitors is cheaper. If you want to step up from the budget level at 1440p, there's actually a big gap in the market right now. The monitors that I was previously recommending, I still do like them. However, they are now in price competition almost with the 4K game monitors and with 240 hertz 1440p game monitors. But if you're somebody who absolutely wants really, really good motion clarity, you really, really want great color gamut to it, the MSI Optics Mag 27 for QRF QD, the quantum dot version of this monitor still remains my top pick. Right now it's selling for 407. It sells often for as low as $380. I like it much better at that price than I do 407 because again, we're gonna get into 4K gaming monitors here in just a moment with just another about 50 or $100. I also still like the LG models, the 32 GP 850B and the 27 GP 850B, obviously 32 for 32 inch, 27 for 27 inch. 27 inch often sells for more than the 32 inch right now the 32 inch is less than 400 dollars 27 inch is virtually the same price obviously i grabbed the 32 inch but these are good replacements for the mag if you can't find that msi model in stock or in your region let's jump into 1440p high refresh rate so 240 hertz and higher and honestly the gigabyte m27 q x now that's back in stock has completely undermined the competition from asus and alienware so no longer am i recommending 650 to 750 dollar monitors in this category if you you want flat IPS, I'm now recommending this for $450. 240 hertz, really good color gamut on it, really low latency. It's got the KVM switches, so you can switch the mice and keyboard to multiple devices using the monitor. Absolutely phenomenal value. And honestly, I just cannot recommend you spend more than this if you're looking for flat IPS. Of course, if you're looking for it, I, to me, still the best 240 hertz or higher 1440p gaming monitor, it continues to be the Samsung Odyssey G7. Now this is a curved VA panel. It's not for everybody. If you're looking for that super immersive gameplay, if you're looking for really high contrast on it, but the response times on this monitor continue to be amazing. Right now, 599, this is the 32 inch version. For some reason, the 27 inch version, as I'm filming this is selling for $50 more. The prices fluctuate a lot. I target the 32 inch between 600 and 650 dollars, and with about a 50 to 100 dollar discount on the 27 inch. But still, remains to me one of the best gaming monitors out there. Let's jump into the best ultra wide and super ultra wide 1440p gaming monitors. Remember, these are not really appropriate for console. These are primarily PC gaming. Console do not support these very well. But if you're looking to get a budget level ultra wide experience, $379 for the Gigabyte G34WQC. This is a really good panel. Often can find it as low as $329 up to about 400. This is a price I would buy it at. If you are looking for that flat IPS ultra wide gaming monitor experience at 1440p, then honestly the Gigabyte M34WQ is a phenomenal panel. I really do like this one. It's got the KVM switches for it. If you want to do content creation or other kinds of things, you're not going to deal with the curved monitor. 429 right now is about what it usually goes for. If you're looking for the absolute best of the best in terms of the ultra wide, then we're talking about OLED and we're talking about the Alienware AW3423DWF. Now this version of it right now selling for 999, it's actually on sale. This is unusual price. Typically you're going to pay more like 1100 for it. Now this one is the FreeSync Premium Pro one. If you want the one with the NVIDIA G-Sync module in it, which I don't recommend, that one's more like $1,299. Basically, it's the same exact panel, just minus that G-Sync kind of hardware module. The contrast on this is absolutely incredible. OLED, remember, you can turn off those individual pixels. It has near infinite contrast. It has almost instantaneous response times to it. HDR on this monitor is 
absolutely phenomenal, will blow you away. If you want HDR 1440p ultra wide, this is definitely the monitor that I would pick up right now. I do just want to mention the Samsung Odyssey G9. This monitor often sells for as low as about $899 to $1,000. At that price, I would pick it up. Right now, it's a little too expensive for my taste at $1,200. This is still the monitor I would recommend at the Super Ultra Wide. There are some other Super Ultra Wides coming out later in 2023 that you can take a look at. I do expect them to be priced in like the $1,800 to $2,500 range. So if you're looking for this amazing experience, remember 240 hertz gaming monitor, still one of the best at you know, anywhere around that $1,000 price point. Let's talk 4K, 144 hertz and higher refresh rate gaming monitors. And there is a bevy to pick from at around the $500 price point and going up. Remember, these are great for console and these are great for PC. Just if you have a PC, just make sure your GPU who's gonna support playing games at these kinds of refresh rates at 4K. The first one is the Acer Predator XB283K. There's on another version of this as well. $539, you're gonna get USB type C on this. It's got a whole USB hub to it. Really good color calibration out of the box on it. I love the stand on it. Good ergonomics overall. The other panel that's virtually identical in a lot of feature set is the Gigabyte M28U. Now this does have the KVM switches on it. If you want to use this for multiple devices and use the same keyboard and mouse at a nice price 529. Either of these panels are absolutely phenomenal. I give the Acer a very, very slight edge if you don't need the KVM switches. If you're looking for more like 32 inches, then it gets a little bit more more complicated. 699 is now our price point. It's about another $170. That being said, the Gigabyte M32U is a really good one. There's also curved versions of this. It's a VA panel and very good reviews on it. It's the Gigabyte M32UC. Typically sells for about $50 to $100 less than this. So it's another one you can consider. If you're looking for 240 hertz or higher refresh rates at 4K, I struggle a little bit with this because there are some good monitors coming down the pike in 2023 you might consider waiting for. But if you're looking for something now that's pretty good quality, the Samsung 32 inch, Neo G8, this is 4K 240 hertz. Now remember, this is a curved monitor. It's got a 1000 R curve, pretty aggressive curve on it. Decentest HDR quality on it. Comes with AMD FreeSync Premium Pro. $1,300 is your entry point here. Remember, you can get the Alienware 34 inch 1440p for about the same price. But if you're looking for 240 hertz 4K, right now, this is, I think, your best option. Let's jump into the best OLED 4K gaming experience. Again, this is great for console. This is great for gaming PCs. and we do expect a lot of OLED releases towards the latter part of 2023, starting around the end of the second quarter, all the way through the rest of the year. But right now I would go with the Aorus FO48U. Now this is a gaming monitor, it's not a TV. Don't buy it thinking it's a TV. Phenomenal contrast on it. HDMI 2.1 all the way around, 120 Hertz. Amazing, amazing gaming monitor that you can do HDR gaming on and feel really, really good about because it's got that OLED infinite contrast, instantaneous response time just looks really really good $900 you can often find this even a little bit less than that but about $900 is what I would look to pay the other one of course is the LG C2 OLED we do expect this to get replaced by the LG C3 OLED not a lot of updates between the C2 and the C3 I would grab the C2 if you can at a discount right now it's selling for $996 for the 42 inch for the 48 inch a little closer to a thousand dollars this is an actual TV you can use as a TV it's also an amazing game room type setup if you want your PS5, your Xbox Series X, or you just wanna have an amazing PC setup, this is the one to get. Remember to check out those links down in the video description to get current pricing and availability for you. And of course, if you got value out of the video, give it a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel, especially this guy right here. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon, that way you get notified when we release cool content. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll catch you on the next one.